I believe we should be going live on YouTube as well. Awesome. Let me just fix my Instagram feed. Make sure we're live on that as well. I'm getting posted loads of things. Here you go. There. Great. Awesome. Hello. Hello, YouTube. Hi, Facebook, and hi, Instagram. Uh, it's Dr. Rupi again from the Doctor's Kitchen. Uh, today, I'm doing another 3 2 one recipe. This recipe is in the book. It's the herb and walnut crumb fish. Very simple. First things first, make sure you've got some boiled water that has um, uh, just come off the boil, and then you're turning on your oven at about 180 to 200 degrees centigrade just to get warmed up. So you can pop your fish in there, and I'm going to talk you through this recipe. If you're an email subscriber, you would have already had the recipes. We would have sent them on last week and on Wednesday. But don't worry if you don't have them. This recipe is in the comments below uh, in YouTube, and it's in the book if you've already got the book. Regardless if you've got the book or not, I just want you to learn the 3 to one formula. That is three portions of fruits, vegetables, nuts, or seeds, two servings per recipe, all using one pan, so like trays, curry stews, tray bakes. This is a tray bake today. This is one of the rare recipes that I've actually used uh, fish in. So most of the book is plant-based. I tend to use most of my recipes are plant-based um, because we need to get more plants in our diet. But that doesn't necessarily mean that uh, you don't have you, you uh, have to eat plants all the time. So it's completely up to you. All right, so uh, to start this off, we're gonna make a quick pickle. Whip round the ingredients. If you're cooking along with me and you're on YouTube, just give us a thumbs up uh, or just say hi. If you're watching along, totally fine as well. I know a lot of us are locked down in the UK. All of us are down, locked down in the UK, so just say hi uh, wherever you are. To start this off, whip round the ingredients. We've got some red cabbage, about 160 grams. This is a bit more than 160 grams, so I'm only gonna use about three quarters of it. Got some walnuts, uh, some bread, just as like some, some whole grain uh, bagel that's gone stale, that's perfect for the crumb. Got some white fish fillets over here, if you can't see uh, YouTube and Instagram, but this, uh, sorry, Facebook and Instagram, that's some white cod fillets. Um, uh, I've got a, a tray with some parchment on it. They've got dried oregano, dried thyme, black pepper, salt, some chili flakes, some lamb's lettuce uh, that I'm gonna use for the salad afterwards. Fennel seeds. I've got maple syrup instead of honey today um, for the uh, for the quick pickle and some apple cider vinegar. But you could use red wine vinegar as well. That's totally fine. All right, let's make our pickle because the pickle tends to take around 30 minutes. We might not have 30 minutes in total to make it, uh, but I'm going to show you and make it. And if you want to do a different pickle, you can use different vegetables. If you've got fennel. Uh, if you've got uh, any sort of allium vegetable, even garlic would work as well. Just putting in the uh, loads of salt and loads of vinegar and uh, draining it off while good. So you want your cabbage to be pretty fine. If you're cooking along, just use this normal technique I've been teaching you guys all week. It's literally just against your fingers. So you have fingers as a guard and then try and get it as thin as possible. And this is the kind of thickness you want. It's thin, like a shave. If you've got a mandolin, that would work really well. But if you don't, don't worry about it. I'm just gonna adjust my YouTube video because it's a little, cutting my face off a bit. There we go. You don't need to see the bit. Brilliant, okay, fine. So we're just gonna try and do it. And you don't need to do it as fast as this. You can go as slow as you want. But I just wanna make sure we're getting nice shredding of the red cabbage. And you can use it with white cabbage if you want, savoy cabbage, that's totally fine. And you could use even red onion, white onion, that would also work, totally fine. And if you've been watching along this whole week, every day, 6 p.m., I'm cooking three to one recipes to teach you the formula of how to look after your health. It's all about fiber, colors, plant focus, whole food, Lots of variety, that's exactly what your gut microbiota fuels on. And if you, you know, if you didn't want to make the pickle, you could use like a sauerkraut, a red pickle, a kimchi, uh, that would also work. All right, so this goes in, this is one of our portions, goes into a big bowl over here, I'll pop it in front of us so you can see. And to this, we want to add a big pinch of salt to draw out some of the moisture and that color. Big, big pinch of salt, some sea salt. I'm gonna go in with a little bit of pepper. I know that's not typical to go into a pickle, but I like adding pepper. 
in it goes, some fennel seeds. You can just put in, if you don't like the aniseed flavor, you don't need to use fennel seeds, but I love that aniseed flavor, it's brilliant. You could use coriander seeds as well, if you've got some coriander seeds knocking the spice cubby, you know what to do with it. Fennel seeds, coriander seeds totally work fine. I'm gonna go in with some apple cider vinegar, probably about three tablespoons is what you need. So in that goes, and then you need a sweetener. And the sweetener I'm using today is maple syrup. I ran out of honey, but you could use uh, a little bit of sugar as well, but maple syrup also works for a little bit too much. About a tablespoon is all you need. And then some hot water. This has just come off the boil. And if you're cooking along, if I'm going a little bit fast, it's just because I want to get this pickle ready. So when the fish comes out, it's had at least 20 minutes or so to steep. You want to ideally have it for 30 minutes or longer and it will keep in the fridge for days. So there is your quick pickle. And the, the trick to this pickle, well not the trick, but one of the things that I want you to make sure you make use of is the, uh, the brine. The brine is really, really tasty. Uh, Nigella used it in a, uh, in a cocktail on one of her recent um, uh, programs. It was really nice, but uh, use the brine in, in other pickles and cooking. Um, it's, it's super, super useful. All right, this is your pickle done. Put this to one side and just let everything steep. I'm just going to move all these ingredients out of the way. And now we're going to make the, uh, the herb walnut crumb. Now, if, you're, if you've got any dried herbs at home, whether it be thyme or organo, uh, or any, any sort of dry woody herbs like rosemary, this, it would work absolutely fine. It's one of the only recipes where I actually suggest having a little food processor. Most of my recipes just require a chef's cutting board, a chef's knife, and that's it. You can still do it with a chef's knife, but you just need to sit there and just go for it like that the whole time. But if you have a little processor or a Nutribullet or any sort of bullet blender, that would work absolutely fine. This is actually a gluten-free um, bun that I, I've had. It's, it, I had it in the freezer, I thawed it out. Um, it's stale, it, I wouldn't recommend eating like this, but it's perfect, perfect for making crumbs. So in this goes into the food processor. We're gonna pop a little bit of salt in here as well. So we're gonna sort the fish afterwards. In go about half these walnuts. I've probably used a bit more than 60 grams here. That's totally fine. And we're gonna go in with our oregano uh, thyme. If you want suggestions for different ones. Oh, we've got someone from Indiana, USA. I love Indiana. I was there in Indianapolis a couple of uh, years ago for a friend here. Uh, brilliant. You could use balsamic vinegar. Yeah, you could use that. Uh, could you omit the sugar? Totally. You could totally omit the sugar. There's, there's no uh, reason why you, you, you need the extra sugar in that. I mean, it's typically how pickles are made, but yeah, you don't need to have that. Okay, so in goes some dried herbs. So I'm using oregano here. Pretty hard with oregano. Going with some uh, thyme. And if you want to do a completely different flavor base, but using the nuts and the bread, uh, or even just the nuts and the row of flaxseed would work really well, then yeah, you could do that. Got some from the Midlands. Hey, Angela. Okay, in goes the thyme. I'm gonna go in with some black pepper and uh, some chili flakes as well. Also, you could put chili flakes in the pickle. I can't remember if I put that in the instructions or not. Apologies if I did, and I didn't put it in the actual pickle, but it's, it's not essential. So in goes the black pepper. And I'm gonna make a little bit of noise. Put this to one side. It's a very, very simple recipe. This is barely cooking. The only cooking element is really making the crumb. Wow, someone from San Diego, amazing. I, uh, I've been to the gas lab, in this, uh, the gas lab district many times, love San Diego, went to a functional medicine conference there a few years ago as well, it's a great place. So this is what you should be left with, for those of you in uh, face, uh, Facebook and, and Instagram, um, this is the crumb here. So it's, it's fragrant, it's got those dried herbs in, uh, it's, it's a little bit coarse, it's exactly what you want. It's got the walnuts in there, the walnuts are gonna add fiber, fat, that, that, uh, uh, it, it's gonna brown a bit as well in the oven when we put it in there. That's exactly what you want for your crust. So this is perfect, exactly what you want. And you can use this crust on so many different things as well. So we're gonna pop the fish on here. 
I use a technique whenever I'm handling animal products. I use a dirty hand, which is to put it down and touch the actual fish. It's a medical thing. This is your clean hand on this side. And then with the blade, so put that out of the way. So this, I'm using my clean hand here. And my dirty hand is going to pat the thing down. That way you're not touching anything that's touched raw fish or raw meat with your other hand. And then when you go to wash, you can actually turn the tap on with your clean hand and then wash your dirty hand first and then do the other, do it the other way. And that's it. It's the same way we do sort of lines and different uh, medical interventions in, in a and &E and stuff. We, uh, when you're doing a chest strain, you have a clean hand and a dirty hand. Uh, we have an ABG as well. Okay, fine. And I want the crumb, I know I've made lots of crumb here, but I actually want the crumb to go on the outside here because um, they go all gnarly and delicious in the oven. And clean hand again with the salt. That goes on top, a little bit of salt. And then I'm also going to open up my olive oil <laughs> with one finger. This is my clean hand, it's my dirty hand. Don't forget. And this goes on top, and then this is going to go straight into the oven. Here we go. I'm going to wash this hand. Quick rinse, and then this goes in the oven for around 10 to 12 minutes, depending on your oven. It should be fully cooked in that time, and then brown on the outside. I'm just going to add a tiny bit more olive oil, just because I want the, the crumb on the outside to get brown, a tiny bit more salt on the outside as well. Perfect. Okay, in the oven. It should be at temperature now. Yeah, and that's uh, 180 to 200, depending on your oven. Mine's fan assisted, so it doesn't need to be super, super hot. Right there. And then this is the point where I would just clean down my kitchen because there's no real need for me to, you know, which on it. It's so simple to make the rest of the salad ingredients. I'm gonna use this plate here, and I'm gonna make one serving, but this recipe actually makes enough for, for two. So, um, like, loads of room for you to mess around with this recipe and make it your own. Uh, I'll answer some questions if you have any. I'm just gonna check the time. So, yeah, in about 10 minutes, that's when I'm gonna take out or check the, uh, the fish. So, on YouTube, uh, new to the party, making the start on some of the books. Brilliant. Oh, from the Midlands, Warwickshire. Awesome. <laughs> that's great. Uh, NHS shifts. Thank yeah, thanks, thanks. I uh, do some NHS work at the moment, uh, mainly weekends, which is great, but it might change. So I'm going to try and be here every day, Monday to Friday, 6 p.m., to teach you guys three to one recipes. Uh, but if I can't, then accept my sincere apologies. But I'm going to try and be here for a whole January because I want people to understand the three to one method, which is just super simple and it's a formula for health. We need to get much more fruit and vegetable and nuts and seeds in our diet. We currently do have a massive lack of these things in our diet. And they contain a whole plethora of different things like phytonutrients, the plant chemicals that we find in an array of ingredients, whether it be uh, butter, lettuce that we've got here, or uh, peas, or you know even the spices that are concentrated sources of micronutrients. And the nuts and seeds have got omega-3 short chain, as well as uh, magnesium, vitamin E, zinc, again, loads of minerals that are currently lacking in westernized diets that we have in the UK and the US. And there's a lot of research now looking at if we simply increase the consumption, which can be done on a budget, um, we could prevent a whole plethora of diseases that is burdening our healthcare system. Whether or not that has an impact on your susceptibility to things like viral pandemics is still to be shown, but it certainly won't hurt to make sure that we have a healthier population, one that is um, less obese and less prone to lifestyle related issues. So that's sort of my mission with the doctor's kitchen and that's why I'm spending so much time in the kitchen teaching everyone uh, uh, how to cook uh, three to one recipes. I'm so sorry that I can't respond to messages on Instagram or Facebook because I can't see them. I'm really, really sorry. Um, but uh, but yeah, I'm uh, I, I'll start try and do some more lives on Facebook only as well, and just give everyone a chance. But YouTube is kind of where you'll find um, the ability to send comments and stuff. And if you're on Facebook, just jump on YouTube, and uh, you'll see me here. 
can you talk a bit about chopping my chopping board? <laughs> uh, looking to get one and wondering uh, what wood and how to clean it. Really, really good question. So my chopping board is a uh, bamboo chopping board. Very cheap. I bought it on a big website that everyone I'm sure knows the name of. Um, but I'd encourage you to go to Independence if possible. I bought this a number of years ago um, and, and get a bamboo website, a, a bamboo uh, a chopping board. The way to clean it is to make sure you don't submerge it in water. Uh, you don't want to submerge it because you'll, you'll get the wood to swell and then it can crack. I've done that a couple of times and there's a little crack here, but it's still going. And I'd always, always use a wooden chopping board, like a bamboo chopping board, uh, when using your knife, because if you use a glass one, you blunt the knife massively, um, and the bamboo is nice and soft, and it doesn't have massive crevices in its last few years. So, yeah, it's a really good question, and I'm sure I'm going to get asked about my knife. This is a Miyabi knife. I invested about £100 into getting this knife, and this knife has lasted me about four years. You know, it will last a lifetime as long as you look after it, you sharpen it properly, um, and again, you, when you clean it, you make sure it's dry so that way you don't get oxidization of the blade as well. I'm sorry if this is a little bit off topic, but I'm, I'm obviously you can tell I'm passionate about anything to do with the kitchen. So, uh, cool. Eagerly awaiting my 321 book in the US. I know, I'm really sorry. This, we don't have a launch um, date for the book in the US at the moment, uh, but loads of you guys have been asking about it. You can get it uh, via um, uh, UK shipping. Uh, at bookstores and stuff, but it will cost you taxes and a little bit more time. You have to do the conversion as well to um, imperial measurements, unfortunately. Uh, don't forget to plug my podcast as well. It's amazing. Thank you very much, Gary. Yeah, we put a lot of effort into the podcast and we talk about a whole plethora of different uh, topics like eating for immunity. We're actually talking about eating for ADHD next week with a colleague of mine who's um, a PhD uh, researcher, who's done a master's in nutrition, she's a nutrition specialist, and we talk a lot about omega-3 and why she's such an, uh, an avid believer in, in the utility of omega-3. Um, her son actually has been diagnosed with ADHD and she's gone through the whole process of being a parent with a child with ADHD and finding a number of different avenues that have actually worked anecdotally for her son. And then she went into research and became an academic um, and is now chatting about it, which is amazing, amazing, amazing work. Um, if I chop veg in advance a couple of days earlier, do the vegetables lose their nutrition? So whenever you increase the surface, let's say this is a butternut squash. Whenever you increase the surface area, you increase the surface area by which the butternut squash can become oxidized. And that oxidation process leads to degradation of the nutrients. So wherever possible, I would suggest buying the whole butternut squash or the whole carrot or the whole insert vegetable, rather than buying it in a processed form, which might be cubed or grated or macerated in a certain way that in increases and exposes its surface area. Obviously, in terms of the spectrum and the steps, is like get as many ingredients into your diet as possible, tick. And if that has to be grated or cubed for convenience reasons, okay, that's fine. Ideally, you want to get it as whole, seasonal, as minimal transport, i.e. locally. Uh, that way you've minimized the handling process, which also can lead to degradation of the nutrients. Um, so yeah, so th th that's uh, my, my very long-winded answer to, if you can reduce the, um, uh, the amount of processing before you buy your ingredients, the better. Uh, thanks for the question. Uh, I can't remember, don't know who actually asked me that question. Uh, where, should you consider ditching, switching away from supermarket fruit and veg? I'm not sure about the quality of the produce. I'd be interested in your thoughts. So uh, I think veg boxes are fantastic. Um, there are so many around the UK. Uh, a lot of them sourced locally from small farmers. So if you can get your fruit and veg for them, brilliant, because they have direct relationships with farmers and they give them better rates. So if you can, that's great. It's harder to do that in perhaps um, – areas where they don't distribute those kind of boxes. But if you can, that's that's great. So yeah, I, I highly recommend that uh, if you if you can. It's, sometimes it's cheaper as well. Uh, can you freeze the remainder of the red cabbage? You can freeze it, but red cabbage is like indestructible, this stuff. It's pretty amazing. So this will last very well for a couple of days at least. 
But if you had to freeze it, you could. But the thing is, when you thaw something like red cabbage, it, it does have the tendency to become a bit sloppy. So, so yeah, so I, I, I'd be careful of that. I, and I hope you're noticing, even if you're watching along and if you're cooking along, this recipe is so simple, such that I can just talk to you guys for 10 minutes and I'm still technically cooking, which is amazing. So my puppy is in the background making loads of noise there. So <laughs> apologies for that. Uh, I get mine in the US. Oh, brilliant. Oh, yes. Uh, the book depository will deliver to the US. That's a very good point. Thank you so much, Murphy. Uh, let me do a podcast with my uh, health guru in there, Ari Witten. I haven't heard of them. Sorry, man. Um, can you talk a bit about what should be helpful to control lupus flare up? So there is a, a doctor, I believe, who talks exclusively about lupus. And for those of you who don't know, it's an autoimmune condition. Um, it's growing in uh, prevalence, unfortunately, but it's one where the body attacks uh, itself and it can lead to a whole plethora of different presentations. Sometimes uh, liver disease, where your liver numbers go up, sometimes it's skin, sometimes it's a whole combination of issues. So it's a very complicated topic and one that I don't think would be appropriate to just give you a, a 60 second answer for. But Deb, there is a doctor, I forget, and I think it might be the lupus doctor. Um, and she's done a lot of research on that, so I definitely, I definitely look out for her. Uh, can you see my gorgeous puppy? She's running around behind, so unfortunately I can't grab her, but um, she is around, she is around. Let me check on my fish on that note, because it's been about 10 minutes. Uh, and I want to show, I can already smell it uh, at the moment, it's, uh, it's, it's amazing. Okay, so this is already looking pretty incredible. So this is what it's looking like at the moment. I'm going to pop it in for another three minutes or so, it probably needs a good 12 minutes. And you want to keep an eye on it because you don't want the nuts to burn because that will destroy the fat. It'll, it'll, become inflammatory in that respect so you want to make sure you don't burn the fats particularly those really good fats that you get in um, walnuts because they're, they're really good for you for the salad super simple okay we're just going to dress our plate here so i've got enough salad here for two servings we to dress this plate over here and then pop the peas on top and all I've done with the peas is I've just allowed them to thaw on their own um, if you if they're still a little bit frosty like some of these are actually all I would do is just run them under the tap um, for uh, like literally seconds and that just takes away the frost and that, I don't want them to be just thawed because they have a poppy bite it might not might not be the best uh, recipe considering we're in the middle of winter at the moment you probably don't want to be eating cold food, but that hoppiness I think is brilliant. And like I've said before on these lives, frozen food is absolutely fantastic from a nutrition point of view because they, they freeze it at source and that way you actually retain a lot of nutrition. So it's, yeah, it's definitely uh, what, one that I would recommend. So things like mixed veg or sweet corn or all that kind of stuff, very, very good, very, very good for you. Um, Canada, oh wow, I've got someone from Canada, that's brilliant. Thank you. Okay, cool. Uh, so we've got this, and like I said before, all I would be doing at this point is just cleaning down. I'm going to show you the uh, the red cabbage as a moment because even after like 20 minutes of steeping, it's definitely softened. I'm just going to try a piece. That's exactly what I want. So we're going to go in with the salad, and this is going to be like a beautiful, visually appealing salad as well. Wonder bar. In that goes. Okay, so that's our red cabbage. And uh, the thing I would do if you have any leftovers for these, brunch in the morning, pop this in a little pan with some olive oil, toast it up almost like you would do croutons, and put that over like poached eggs or, or some greens or beans, even like simple. Cannellini beans with this on top would work so good because when you when you cook it in a little bit of oil or saute, you get the herbiness, you get the oils, you get that little charredness as well. The texture is really, really good. So definitely don't waste that. All right. This is cooking and smelling perfect. And I, oh wait. All right, so some of my puppies around here. Uh, so, 
Our fish is looking great. Let me show you guys if you can't see from where you are. Or oh, you're, you're behind the camera, so. This is, oh, sorry, it's my puppy. That made, there you go. This is my white fish with the crumb on it. It is absolutely gorgeous. It is perfectly cooked, because if I press on it, it's still a little, it's firm, it gives, but it's, it's firm from the outside. And from the outside, you have a perfectly crust. So my puppy is playing with a squeaky toy at the moment. Uh, this is exactly what you want to look for. It is wonderful. Okay, so one second. Let me serve this up for us. And because I put parchment underneath, it hasn't stuck to the base of this tray, which unfortunately happens when you don't use the parchment. So this, this is restaurant quality fish. <laughs> wonderful. It only takes a few minutes. A lot of people are scared to cook with fish because of undercooking it or overcooking it. Use some of that crumb on the outside and dust your plate like that. A little drizzle of olive oil to finish. And if you have any like raw uh, hazel, uh, hazelnuts or walnuts that you wanted to put on the outside, put those in, on the top as well. And then a little bit of olive oil to finish. Perfect. And there you go. Oh, and if you've got some lemon, another quick drizzle of lemon, that is it. Herb, crust, herb and walnut crusted white fish in literally 26 minutes. Super simple. It's got a red pickle cabbage as well. So, so simple. Three to one method. If you don't want to buy the book, don't worry about it. Just learn the three to one method, three portions of fruit, vegetables, nuts, or seeds, two servings per recipe, all using one pan. I really hope you enjoyed watching this. I hope you've gained something as well from like the chat that we had about nutrition and all the rest of it. Uh, I'm going to be doing these again next week. Sign up for the newsletter. The recipes are going to go out tomorrow morning, first thing. So sign up at thedoctorskitchen.com for the newsletter. You'll get it straight to your inbox and you'll have five. Brand new recipes that I'm going to be doing from Monday to Friday, 6 p.m. on YouTube right here. Uh, so I hope you can join. I really appreciate it. And uh, take care. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Enjoy. And it's great.